Hello, welcome to the A to the K Wrestling Show. As is tradition, we're going to throw it over to Road Dog for A to the K's little known fact of the week. Oh, you didn't know? Beautiful. So, Anthony, as we know, the Texas Rattlesnake Stone Cold Steve Austin himself is set to make his return to WWE at this year's WrestleMania to square what? off with Kevin Owens. <laughs> I said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, Anthony. Did you know, Austin well, has never walked into WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. In all seven think... WrestleManias that Austin was a part of, only three were for the WWE title, and all of three, he won at the event. He was never actually in the position to defend the title at Mania, never walked in with that belt. That's crazy. Well, I have another fun fact for you, Carl. He is not the only Austin who has never walked into WrestleMania as the WWE Champion. Austin Theory has also never done that. What? I did not know that. <laughs> mental. Two crazy, facts with crazy fun facts. Fun times. So, yeah, madness. Absolutely crazy. He would uh, assume. It's baffling. It, you, fact, yeah. Austin only having seven WrestleManias really is actually uh, kind of crazy. It feels like it should be more. Like but, it uh, yeah, it's, when you consider his illustrious career, you just expect that there was a, a, a defense on there somewhere, but clearly not. Okay. Um, so, well, well, you know. To be fair to him, in all three matches he was in for the title, he won them all. So, big winner of Mania. Just never that is a hell of a record. Yeah. I mean, it's no streak, but it's a good record to have. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that was Ace of the K's little known fact of the week. And this is Road Dogs and Plays out of the segment. Oh, you didn't know! Beautiful. So, Anthony, let's mosey on over, shall we, to cover mm-hmm. the WWE. Um, and we're going to kick off with Monday Night Raw. For the highlights, believe it or not, and there's not many, but I'm going to kick off with the Kevin Owens promo that opened the show um, this week. So, short, sweet, um, but the fact is, Kevin Owens is fantastic. He's absolutely great. Um, you know, I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, aren't super happy um, about Austin's kind of return, if we want to call it that. That is the fact. It's, it's there's a game. something I, I really like about just Kevin Owens getting to, like, just beat up uh, someone he like idolized as a child i think that's just that's great I mean, we all wish we could do that well exactly like like people seem to be really unhappy the fact he's coming back to go up against kevin owens but it's like well who else would you rather him go up against you know what i mean like at least i don't want to go like down the whole spear versus spear thing that we had with roman and goldberg but stunner versus stunner it makes sense um so it's gonna be stunning um are they upset that it's kevin owens yeah is that the the overall they're not bothered about austin coming back it's that it's kevin I mean, a few people are just like, oh, you know, he's doing what Sean did. He should have just stayed retired, blah, 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 which it's not being a fan to come back for a match either, by the way. But um, I don't know yeah. why some people get a pass. Like, no, I never hear anyone complain when Ric Flair comes in to take bumps, which is exactly. basically what Austin's doing here. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like, you know, fair, I, I don't understand for, for Kevin Owens why he's taking a lot of flack for this. Like, who else would you rather have had him come, come back for? I, I don't understand. I think Kevin Owens is a perfect foil for him. Um, you know, I've not been super thrilled with the build uh, for all this started about, you know, a Texas thing and all that kind of stuff. But now that we know it's Austin, now we know it's Kevin Owens, Austin squaring off at Mania. I think you've just made a T-shirt there, you know. Really good. <laughs> thrilled for the build. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thrilled for the build. Um, get it now. Pro Wrestling Tees forward slash A to the K Wrestling. You have to make it now. Um, have, to. have to. Yeah, I don't know. I think... Um, you know, Kevin Owens did everything he needed to do to get me even more hyped for this confrontation or little scuffle, whatever it is that they're going to have. Um, and just even the fact, you know, stuns a cameraman, you know, stuff like that. You know, is he going to stun Austin? People are kind of assuming that Kevin Owens are going to get his ass kicked by Austin. But um, Look, I think a passing of the torch should be that he gets to... St- Don't be wrong, Austin needs to... He can't come out of it looking like a total bitch. Let's put it that way, you know what I mean? So he has to get some offense in. But I think the end result should be... Um, KO getting the stun and mm. winning. Good heel heat, passing of the torch. Can you imagine Personally, how, I think that's how, we should go. how nuclear that heat would be in Dallas? <laughs> if, you it's know, the thing. Rumour has it, which we'll get onto in the news this week, is that uh, the Kevin Owens show could actually main event night one of WrestleMania. 
Um, that's that's the go home tonight. One is Austin getting stunned in the middle of the ring in Texas, nice. and Kevin Owens just laughing in his face. That would be a uh, ballsy to say the least. But it would be ballsy. Yes, um, but, but for me, great. Uh, great he, he, that would that he would do Dallas worse than Debbie did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and boy, did she she she, <laughs> she did him bad. So yeah, big highlight for me. Kevin Owens is awesome, and I'm very much looking forward to KO versus yeah, Stone Cold. I, I think that's a refreshing take, that Carl. I, I'm also looking forward to it, right? Good. And not to digress too much, but there are things on the card that I don't really give a shit about. That people seem really hyped about. Not naming any names, right? And I've I've seen this get a little bit of bad press the last few days, and it's doing me in. It's like this is going to be fun. It's going to be like whatever it ends up being. I'm totally happy if it's just a KO show. Uh, Totally happy if it's a bit of a match, but uh, this interaction as a whole, I'm looking forward to. I'm actually quite quite excited. I don't feel emotions these days, so <laughs> I was reluctant to say it, but excited might be the feeling. What's happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> what are these feelings? So, um, so I'm glad that you, you you're one of the people who's open to saying it, Carl. Everyone else is like, oh, old people don't like old people, like. I don't be wrong, I'm normally one of those guys. If it was Goldberg, I'd be moaning about it, but it's not, so there we go. Anyway, uh, my highlight, Carl, and it is the only other highlight of the night, I'm afraid, um, but deserves to be, and that is Lesnar slash Roman, their whole interaction. So Roman playing tough until he found out Brock is there, uh, and then obviously hightailing it. The um, the whole, I uh, don't know if you've got it, but the attitude era vibes with the forklift. Oh, yeah. uh, I think, again, it, they are doing a fantastic job of investing to me in this this match and I think I mentioned it uh, weeks ago but again it feels less about the actual titles than about just they really need to sort of have it you know what I mean they, like the titles don't really I, I don't know like some people might not class it as a good thing but I really like the fact that it's almost become personal do you know what I mean mm. it's less about who, who comes out as the champion it's more about like they, they need to like they both feel that they need to beat the other um, and I like that Although some people might be like, well, no, because it should be about the title. Some respect on it. But there's no respect on it because we're fucking combining titles and one of them that hasn't well, really mattered for a long time. So. I think one of the reasons why we both like the fact that there's animosity between the two of them is because it's one of the only feuds for Mania that is actually a feud where there's actual animosity between the people fighting. Uh, it's not just What are they for? Exactly. Um, you know, it's not just like, <laughs> well, these two are going to fight each other at Mania because, well, we need we need to book them against someone. Like, you know, this actually feels like it's been built up over a long period of time. There's a lot of hatred that, there. That is a fair point, you know. that is This is probably the most fleshed out. And the, the only other thing I'm excited for is probably the closest other thing to being fleshed out, and that's uh, Kevin Owens and Austin. They both <laughs> actually have some sort of story and history to them. There you go. Um, it's crazy, that, isn't it? Like, the, you know, the, the miracles that storytelling can do. It's um, crazy. It's crazy. It's almost like, you know, they make movies. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> we're sports entertainment pal um <laughs> but yeah i am um, i i think cowboy brock is an absolute legend um he's just... i actually think he's my favorite brock <laughs> he's my favorite brock too for all the brocks um, I, I, I just wish he had a new theme that went with his cowboy attire but whatever <laughs> it's all good like i really want it to be the same theme just like country like on a banjo <laughs> I would love that on a banjo. Be that would be so good. Somebody make it happen, please. Someone musically gifted. To make Anyone this we thing. know who plays a banjo, please, <laughs> please make this a thing. Um, but yeah, I am. Um, I agree with you. Definitely got attitude vibes from this. Obviously, very much. Um, you know, picking the the car up, flipping it over, stuff like that. You know, I got more attitude era vibes than Braun Strowman vibes, which is a good thing. I would say. Um, yes. He does but, like to flip cars. You're right. He does. Oh, no, sorry, um, it was ambulances and vans, wasn't it, for the most? Yeah, ambulances and making train noises. They were the, the two. Ca- cars were quite mundane for Bra- for Braun, really, though, if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I don't, um, don't want to digress, right, because <laughs> it's totally unrelated, but the TV's on in the background while we're doing this podcast, because right, I often leave it there just for a bit of bit of light. And it's some sort of DIY show, and there's a woman trying to, trying to hammer in a screw, and it's really pissing me off. <laughs> And I just want to express that to you right now. That's totally unrelated to the show. But like, let us know in the comments. Have you ever stuff. tried to hammer a screw? Like, that's not going to work. It's just <laughs> not going to work. Anyway, what are we talking about? <laughs> Professionalism as finest here <laughs> on the A to the K wrestling show. Um, what are you here for? 
Indeed. Um, but yeah, agreed. Highlights and probably the last highlights for WWE this week as we move swiftly into the O'Shites. Now, Damien Priest, Finn Balor. Right. Two guys that typically don't get very good reviews from us of late um, because of how they've kind of, you know, handled themselves, how they've been booked, whatever you want to do. But I, I, I was really enjoying Priest. I'm actually severely disappointed that they, they've just kind of started ruining it. I say started because there's they haven't fought, they, there's still time to, to correct this, but they're not doing exactly. Um, so you know, I used to love Demon Finn. Uh, we, you know, we had a big um, we were big fans of Damien Priest, thinking he could go somewhere, but the pair of them just seem to be kind of meandering their way through mundane Night Raw at the moment. But I started to get a little bit more excited around the US uh, title scene, and you know, Priest and Balor seem to start to make sense. So why is Austin Theory getting involved again here? Like, he's got a program already with Pat McAfee, McAfee, however you say it, at um, WrestleMania. Yeah. McAfee? Pat McAfee? Oh. I don't Yeah, Pat my son. Um, what it is, we've heard it like a million times. <laughs> and we're just like, we're still not sure. I'm going to go with Pat McAfee. I think it's McAfee. I don't know. Um, but, it- right? Austin? I don't understand. I don't understand why... Austin Theory is even anywhere near this shit. Like, him and Pat are, you know, they've got their own storyline going on, right? Apparently. Uh, so, I, just, I don't know. Is this too many cooks? Why have Austin Theory involved yes. in this? It's not even involved cooks. at Mania. Austin has this this problem right now that I don't have anything against Austin Theory, but I feel like the like WWE are so big on him that he's going to start getting, like, two in your face, and then I end up not liking him just because I'm sick of seeing him. Yeah, and it, does, feel like it feels like that. he's going that way, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's a shame because he's a really talented dude, but uh, like I don't need to see him like all the time, you know? No. Like, um, that. Well, exactly. Like you know, some of the stuff he did with Vince and that you know wasn't amazing, but like that was that was fine. You know that you were going to see him a couple of times throughout the night, and it was a decent enough dose of theory. Whereas I don't know. I don't want him to now be inserted into other feuds while he's got other feuds going on and stuff like that. It just doesn't need to happen. I think, you know, Priest and um, Bala can do with just a bit of time themselves, I think, to kind of further their own feud. So. Honestly, especially Bala. Like, I don't think he's had any decent TV time in a little while. And I, yeah, come at me. Uh, his NXT run quite recently was shit. I don't care. I don't yeah, about he's got a fantastic gimmick now, Pointy McFinger Bang. That's what he does. <laughs> bang, bang. Pew, pew. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this before. Um, so, yeah. Get to yeah. from me, unfortunately. I agree. I agree. Speaking of stuff that's doing, Madam. <laughs> right. Liv and what? Selena and all that kind of stuff. Liv, Carl. Um, look, right. I don't necessarily have an issue with the match, right? Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> Again, and we I think we mentioned this last week because again we had to mention this last week, but all this like theatrics of like the Carmella and Corey stuff, again, it's just it's that classic whole like and I don't I, I'm not trying to make this like a gender thing, right? But you you very rarely see this done with a with a men's match there. No. Let's be honest, not right? At all. But they see they do this a, a a surprising amount with, with women's matches where it's like, Yeah, you don't need to worry about the match. That's that's just you know, don't worry about that. We've got all this other shit going on. Like, I don't get it. Like, it, it, and you know, while we're on it, like, I wish Selena would start with the English accent. I, I do. I, I, is that because she can't, she can't maintain. I've, I've seen a couple of things now, um, <laughs> where she's trying to do the promo, and it's like, yeah, you kind of keep slipping there because, like, just, just do your natural tone. You're more badass that way, anyway. Exactly. I, um, I love the King of the Ring, and I loathe it at the same time. Same, obviously, with the Queen of the Ring because. Obviously, you get stuck with a stupid royal gimmick at the end of it, and it just doesn't need to be the case, unfortunately. The like, uh, thing is, no one said you had to be English. Like, I get <laughs> it. We've got a queen, right? You, okay, you, you kind of naturally might go to the monarchy when, when you're thinking. But look, like, King Corbin didn't walk around with a fake British accent, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think King Booker did, for, did it for a bit and stuff as oh, well. Shit. I think. Ah, uh, that's yeah. Flashbacks. yeah you're right. sorry sorry to bring that back up but yeah i don't you know 
you know, Zelina aside, I agree with you. I, I don't think the gimmick is working. I don't see why she needs to be a queen. But even she that does. aside, I think um, I don't even mind if she leans into the queen thing a little bit. But she doesn't need to make it an entire gimmick. She was she was cool anyway. She well, just needed what she needed was airtime and like a title run. If, in all honesty, yeah, not the think, tag um, titles. It's not the same. <laughs> I think the point you made though around like you wouldn't see this kind of shit if it was a men's match. Like you've got Liv and Zelina in the ring, the pair of them. Um, you know, a, a really good to be fair to them, and they just they didn't get any focus because it was all about Carmella and uh, her running, jumping into Corey's arms to get away from Rhea Ripley, and it was just like, well, you know, it reminded me almost of when Mickey James and Natalia were having that match, and then there was shit going yes. on by the announce table, and it was just to your point, it's like, well, the match isn't important; it's not about that; it's about something else that's happening. And wasn't and like, the shit well, like? Wasn't it like it wasn't even anything to do with the like? At least this is slightly to do with the thing. Right? The, the Mickey James one was more insulting because it had fuck all to do with Mickey James's match. <laughs> well, exactly. Wasn't it like Seth or someone? Yeah, I think it was. Like, yeah, it had absolutely nothing to do with it. But um. I think as well what might help if there was an end game, but what is the actual end game to these theatrics? Yeah, I'd, like, in what way I mean, is Corey going to factor into the end story here? Well, they're like they've got like their own YouTube show now or something, haven't they? For, under the WWE umbrella, so it's like this Which is the fine. shit. The shit's tie in ever. Put an advert up with the Snickers logo and crack on. Yeah, no, we don't we don't need this shit. I th- I think they've gone like well, people don't realise that Corey and Carmella are an item, so we need to really show that on TV. How are we going to do that? Do you know what well, I mean? It's I, like, hope, I hope that they learn that we do know that. Yeah. Because I, I, I dread to think of the other ways they're going to try and prove to us that they're a couple. Well, you see, the casual... Just... I mean, to be fair, Carmella said that she wants to go and do the live sex celebration thing with Corey that Edge and Lita did. So. Uh, I she had any sort of conversation with Lita about that because I don't <laughs> think that there was too proud of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, we'll see. But... Yeah, shame, shame for the pair of them. Um, just didn't get uh, the respect that they deserved, unfortunately. Agreed. Such a shame. Um, now, somewhat of a polar opposite to the highlight with Kevin Owens. Like normally, I love Seth Rollins. I think you know we both talk about him all the time. How you know good he is and his character oh, yeah. and stuff like that, right? I just think this whole segment was silly, and I've said it. <clears throat> I feel like for at least you know the last couple of weeks now. I hate the fact that WrestleMania has become about people doing everything they can to be on WrestleMania. It's not about a feud. It's not about settling the score. None of that. It's just, you know, I have to be on the WrestleMania card and I'll do anything to get there. So, you know, best friends, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. Now Seth is going, well, I know you've got a talk show with Stone Cold, but I'm going to host it instead. It's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. And then you've got the fucking idiotic authority figures of Sonya Deville and Pierce as well, even though he wasn't in the segment. I hate the pair of them, right? Why does Sonya come out and goes, oh, well, obviously we haven't booked anything again for the main event of the show, so this sounds great. Yes, of course, we will put your talk show segment on the line, Kevin, at um, WrestleMania by putting a match on between you and Seth tonight. Why? It makes fucking no sense. Yes. And similarly, like, okay, I get that you're the authority figure, but like, do you have authority to do that? This isn't like it's not a title. Like, can exactly. you can you do that? Exactly. Like, I, I, I don't. I, what I, if legit... Seth wanted his car? Can we <laughs> <he> do that? <laughs> exactly. Right. So, uh, Seth, you just had a kid, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. We're gonna stick around, stick on, stick it on a pole, and uh, there you go. But no, I just on a pole. Yeah, I just don't get any of this at all. Um, it's a, it's I, a I think... tragic, terrible way to do. You know. I feel so bad for Seth Rollins, who's been one of the mainstays. To this is his road to WrestleMania. It's awful. Yeah. I'm going to call it now. Right, this is a, a wild prediction, but I'm going to do it anyway. Right, I give it a year. Right, I want you to revisit this in a year with me, Carl. Right, I give it a year, and there will be a booking where it doesn't necessarily have to be these two guys, but two wrestlers are going to literally fight over their lunch. <laughs> like, I want your lunch. Well, let's settle this in the ring for the main event of Raw. I think that's going to happen at some point with this kind of stupid, silly ass booking. It wouldn't surprise me, to be fair. Um, I can see something like that happening, like Thanksgiving episode or whatever. It's like, let's fight over the turkey. So, Seth versus KO for KO sandwich. That's what we're going to have. <laughs> I mean, kind of like friends, you know. I was going to say, sandwich. <laughs> if it ends up in a segment with Seth Rollins going, my sandwich, then it might actually be great, to be fair. Actually, I actually honestly prefer that. Like, 
I'm mm. actually thinking that'd be a better booker than this shit. Yeah, but I just um, the thing that irked me the most about it all is Sonny Deville sauntering out going, I actually quite like the sound of that. So what we're going to do is it's going to be our main event. Like, book something before the show, dickhead. <laughs> don't halfway through the show don't go. Oh well, I guess that could be our main event then. Well, I will put- show like just two wrestlers like oh. Because they've lost the main event. Exactly. It's just like, it's so stupid. Like, don't get me wrong, AEW don't get it right all the time either. But you know, it's just, you know that t- Tony Khan exists in the background, doing his thing, booking matches, whatever. And usually the matches are announced ahead of time because we know what's going to happen. Like, All right, if you're going to do this, right, where you randomly make main events, right, why not build it into something else? Like, the, the utter, like... Um, Paranoia that uh, Sami Zayn has, left, as an example, right? That that he's just getting screwed over left and right. How about every time he has a main event booked, that's the one that they push for these kind of exactly. stupid shit. That like, would buy like into that. That, that story as well. But instead, they just go, "Well, we didn't have anything planned." And it's like, well, like, what? do you know what AEW did recently? They they had a match which, um, like, it went short. You know, essentially, like they, they they allotted fifteen minutes, twenty minutes for it or something. It was over in five, so they booked another match. To, to fill yeah. the time and it was like well the fucking hell that makes sense right you know what I mean like, like you're managing the time you have on TV that's crazy exactly isn't that isn't do you that remember insane? when WWE used to do it do you remember when WWE have something that like it, it like it, it go off air because they ran out of TV time yeah back in the day yeah. because that felt real exactly. and now they're just like eh yeah it's so, it's so lazy um, yeah I, I, I hated the whole thing unfortunately I think we're we're especially disappointed that Mania seems to be, as you say, very much about well, we need a match. I need to be at Mania. It's like, yeah, do you remember when like Mania matches were decided just because you know people were fighting for stuff? Exactly. Like, it, it weren't about being at Mania. I get that Mania is a big deal, but part of it Re- being like, a big deal was like, yeah, oh, I don't know, decent feuds and stories and stuff. Like WrestleMania was usually like booked, you know, sometimes a year in advance. You knew this was the route we were going to, and it was all going to culminate between the top two guys at WrestleMania. And it was a big, long program that got you there. Now it's hmm, a couple of weeks before the event. What we're going to do with Seth? I don't know. Yeah, and don't be wrong. There's still elements of it because we praised and uh, like this is just me trying not to be totally negative. We've totally praised Brock versus Roman. That has been Mm -hmm. built up brilliantly, and will culminate at Mania, and that's how it should be. But yeah. the fact that that's pretty much the only thing going on is shocking. And yeah. I'll give and to be fair some though credit, but even that hasn't had as long a build. To be fair, they looked themselves into this because Brock should never was never even meant to win the title. It was never meant to be well, a title versus title anyway, yeah. was it? So that's um, a fair point, yeah. you know, but still, yeah, I you know, I agree with you. Give credit where it's due. Uh, obviously, Roman Brock has got a lot of story, a lot of substance behind it. But yeah, just a damn shame to see you know people like Edge and Seth and Kevin Owens be like. Well, what am I going to do to get on the Mania card? Like, it's not what it's not what it's about. And for the record, well, for those of you who might be thinking about like the the women's matches, like again, I'll give slight credit Bianca Belair. Um, well, I assume is that still happening? The, I believe so. Was Kate Faye, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's just yeah. like. But that has probably been the closest to a fully like a fleshed out feud, which mm. again just falls down to the fact that the I, I still don't really like the way they started that by having Becky beat her so decisively, but whatever. Um, but you'll never tell. You'll never convince me that Charlotte versus Ronda is actually built up or in any way interesting. No, not at no. all. So just so we're not we're not ignoring those matches. That apparently so, yeah. didn't even get to main event night one. Boss that <laughs> ridiculous. Um, what do you know? Because like you you expect two nights of mania, you expect one of the women's titles is going to main event one of those nights, and this is basically saying no, right? Yeah, I think so. So, so because there's no way they're gonna not have Brock and um, Roman as the main event night too, right? Oh yeah, sure. so that that's that's already been confirmed, yeah. So if the other rumors are to believe about you know night one's main event in a woman's match, so damn disrespect, yeah. especially how they've done previous the years. There's a bit of a slap in the face. Well, exactly. anyway, we're we're talking about W. Well, no, we are talking about W. We're talking about <laughs> this week in wrestling. This week, indeed. So um, I'll move on to mine then. Of a cord, Carl, mm-hmm. and uh, this won't be any surprise to you, but I mentioned it again. Edge, right? I don't want Edge. I do not want Edge to be on shites, right? But it just, I'm just not a fan of this gimmick. Like, and honestly, this is down. Like, this is Edge, right? Imagine, right? And this is a bit of an extreme. People will go, it's not comparable. It fucking is, right? Imagine the Rock come back when the Rock came back for his like return and his title win for that year he did, right? Imagine if they were like, 
okay, cool, it's great that you're back, but we're going to change your gimmick. I know people wanted to see, like, the people's champ, but we're going to change your gimmick because, you know, you're going to modernise. Like, that's what it feels like they're doing here. Like, we love Edge. Edge is he's like, all right, he's had a few gimmicks over the years, and I, I, I get that he's leaned into some of his older ones. Like, he didn't just come back and be like, I'm the rated R guy again. You know, he leaned into some of the brood stuff and all that kind of stuff. I don't mind that. It's all a nostalgic trip. But what we've got now is, like, well, kind of whiny edge, I suppose. I know, I, I assume he's meant to be a bit more edgy, ironically. But, <laughs> um, but I, I just, I'm I'm not digging it. And I honestly think it's like, now we, we want to, like, we've missed edge. And we didn't think we were going to get edge in the ring again. And, all right, he's been back for a little bit now, but he just does need a gimmick change. He's edge, for fuck's sake. Yeah, it's just, um, it's so, such a random gimmick change as well that they've done for him you know what I mean like he's already as you said he's already had a, a different set of gimmicks over the years you know hark, harping back to the brood and stuff it's nice little touches but you never expect him to fully go back but he's had rated R superstar as like you know full on heel gimmick and people known by that like this weird like you know odd almost like cult cult type edge thing it's like what? who wants this like just let edge be edge <laughs> <laughs> just let Edge be Edge. Well, clearly, um, we thought we knew him, but we never did. That's it. Edge has lost his edge. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, good. Um, which brings us to the final oh shite for WWE this week. Um, and unsurprisingly, it's around the women's tag titles again. I just think it's just so lazy, isn't it, right? Basically, they can't be asked building any storylines for the women. At all, you've got the two title matches, you know, which are, neither of them are going to main events. So, what do you do with the others? Yeah, we can throw them all in a battle royal like we normally do. Or, I know we've got these tag titles lying around now that we don't really care about. So, I know let's get some of the women and we'll we'll form them into tag teams just because that's how tag teams work. And then, um, you know, we've got this triple threat. But ah, what about Natalia and Shayna Baszler? What are they doing? Are they going to go battle royal? Nah, throw them together and make it a fatal four way. Okay. Like fuck cool. me! Like it's it's awful. Like this this just is how tag teams shouldn't be done. You don't just get two random people. Clear sign, like, a fucking clear sign. This is when they've turned around and gone. We want another tag team involved here, and they realise that they've like either split up or fucked up most of them. Like what about the iconic? Oh yeah, they're gone. Well, what about Bailey and? Oh no, that doesn't work anymore. Well, what about uh, Natalia and, and Naya? No, oh, no, no. Sorry, <laughs> Baszler and Naya. Like. No, no, can't do that anymore. Well, do you know what, though? That's what's so funny about it, is we had Baszler with Nia Jax, and we had uh, Natalia with uh, Tamina, and now they've sacked Nia, and, uh, you know, Tamina's doing this weird shit in 24-7 scenes, they've gone, I don't know, guess put these back as tag teams again, but the partners are gone, so we'll put them together. It's just the laziest, yeah. the laziest booking ever. That, that's like, I know it's not, again, it's, it, people will argue it's not compatible, but it's like, imagine, it's like, yeah, it's, it's Edge and Jeff, <laughs> okay <laughs> thanks yeah why not um, that's, that's, why not why not put two random guys together okay yeah it's just um, it's just shocking like you look at the people who are in this Fatal 4 way match like you know no offence to Carmella and Zelina but like they're, they're a joke as a tag team anyway let's be honest like they're pointless and then you've got Liv who's been main eventing for ages um, you know with Becky and, and the like uh, now she's like well let's just throw her with Rhea Ripley because we got them for her, nothing for her either um, well it's like Oh yeah, we split up here uh, and Nikki Cross, so we'd have to put it with somebody. Exactly, and like, how do you have nothing for Sasha Banks on the singles? You know, it's insane, scene? isn't it? Insane. Like, really? Like, like just do Sasha versus Liv or something? To, like, I would, to, honestly, know? would have been more interested in Sasha versus Ronda. Oh yeah, me too. To be fair, but instead but we're stuck with Charlotte. We were, ne- we were never getting that. We were never getting that. Let's be honest. Um, Should have got it. So yeah, just just laziness all around, really, and just a shame for the for the women involved. It just they need someone to open their eyes and say we need to invest a bit of time in these women, and you know we actually could put some matches together which um, are you know based on feuds. Okay, uh, this is um, a very argued take as well. But when are we ready to admit that um, AEW actually has a pretty good women's division as well? I mean, I'm I'm kind of because they. I'm I, thinking. <laughs> I, as recently as a couple of days ago, saw shit on uh, Twitter where they're saying about the women's division in AW shit, and I'm like, are you sure? Have you actually looked at the women's division lately? It's actually not that bad. I'm starting to think that they're not far off at all, the women's division. They, they've certainly yeah. got more women in AW now than they've got in WWE, because WWE have released them all. Um, 
But it's like, yeah, WWE are kind of resting on their laurels when it comes to the women. They've got the four horsewomen who've been carrying the company, you know, from a women's standpoint for quite a few years now. And they've tried to mm-hmm. elevate the likes of Liv, um, but it hasn't really worked out Um Amazing, the thing is, so. they sort of tried and then they pull back. Like they, they, they almost like they never wanted to pull the trigger on air properly. Oh mean. yeah, I mean to be fair, when I say that, that's no, um, that's not me going after live. That's me saying like that exact point is they've tried and then gone nah, and they've, they've kind of been too fearful about it. That's why they brought in the likes of Ronda and stuff as external star power. So yeah, yeah. Um, for me now, like the women's storytelling is so much better. They've got at least four or five, you know, ongoing feuds in the, in the women's. Um, division at all times AEW so yeah I, yeah, I don't get it yeah well, I think at some point people are going to like because it's like just this understood thing that AEW is going to shit women's division but I, I don't think that's been the case now for a little while no I agree Um. so yeah not the best of weeks for WWE this week Anthony um, scores on the doors I'm going to go for a one a one out of five this week um, thoroughly unimpressed I think so close to Wrestlemania as well for us to only have two highlights and both of which being promos or, you know, just backstage shenanigans as opposed to like any standout matches or anything of, of substance kind of says it all really. So one out of five, it's maybe even being generous. Um, no, I'd have to agree with you. I'm not even going to try and argue with you this one. Yeah, it's a one. Not it's a solid one. Literally mm-hmm. the, on the final stretch to WrestleMania and this is what we're getting. It's uh, yeah. And I mean, maybe, I'm sure we'll cover this next week when we do WrestleMania predictions, but it's one of the worst WrestleMania cards of all time as well, at least on on paper so far, so we'll see. Um, we'll see. But moving over to AE Dubs, Anthony. Yeah, um, no, no, no. Do you, you want to kick us off with the first highlight Yes, this I week? fucking do. Yes, I do, Carl. William Regal. <laughs> yes. I knew I liked that guy. So, uh, <laughs> no, just highlight for me for the uh, Regal and the, the Wheeler Utah stuff. Um, loving the way they're putting Regal across um, and this whole sort of, uh, for lack of a, uh, I'm going to go with it, like like the Don of the uh, of the group, really, <laughs> deciding who can make it into the family. And um, I know some people were, like, almost confused by the, the slap. Right, I, I don't know. I, I like I like the way they executed everything here. And... Um, mm-hmm. What do you think? Do you think um, do you think Utah's a good shout? Do you think he's a he's a he's a good uh, good shout I for, mean, this, for this a new lot, stable they're making? A lot of people seem to be really big on him, don't they? I think um, pairing him with the best friends hasn't been great for him. I'm not going to lie. Mm. So it would be good for him to break away from that. If he manages to find his way into the, a stable with these guys, then you've got to assume there's a massive um, you know gimmick change coming for him. You know, yeah. especially in terms of mentality, but. You know, by all accounts, he's got he's got the wrestling chops. I mean, I've seen him a few times. He's always looked pretty decent, but um, like some people proper love him. So it'd be good to see what he can do when he's not one of the best friends. I'm loving this concept of this group. It's like the group that you really want to be in, but it's fucking terrifying as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. It's like uh, to be in this group, you've got to be punched in the face by William Regal. Is that okay? <laughs> not yeah. really. And at any time, these two might beat you up. But all, all, <laughs> all in love, all in love. You know? Exactly. But think of the learnings you can have. <laughs> Um, but no, it's uh, I love it. I think you know when we when it was teased originally that we were going to have uh, Danielson and Moxley somehow teaming up together. I was like, oh, that could be intriguing. But then you know, not to sound Scott Hall, uh, Scott Hall, not to sound Scott Steiner here, but add William Regal into the mix and the chances of us <laughs> loving you a 33 this. Thirty-three to third percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, exactly. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's no Drastic genetic freak. But just uh, <laughs> honest to God, like I, I'm. Again, I know you, some of the younger crowd probably aren't as big on Regal as we are, but like he's an absolute fucking legend, and the the more Regal we get, the better, as far as I'm indeed. concerned. Indeed, in fucking deed. Um, so yeah, definitely highlights. Um, next one I want to talk about, maybe Mar might this one, so I'm keen to get your thoughts on it. But I really liked it, the Jericho Appreciation Society. Right? How do you turn heel in two words, Anthony? Sports entertainer. That's how. Right? Chris <laughs> Jericho is a fucking legend. He is a master at reinventing himself. He does it consistently. So many different gimmicks. Um, you know, even over the recent times, like the pain maker and, you know, fucking everything just like catch for it, like a little bit of the bubbly and everything. He gets everything he does over, right? And I am confident this JAS, just as he's done with everything else that he's done, <coughs> can get over. Like, I, I love his new catchphrase of that's entertainment. I just think that is a 
top quality heel catchphrase. And I think yep. in a company like AEW, which is very much anti, you know, WWE, they're not about sports entertainment, they're pro wrestling, it's a real <clears> sports <throat> feel, all that kind of stuff. This is a fantastic heel faction, I think. Yeah, I think there's a lot of promise there. Um, apologies, I'm not going to commit as much right now, but again, Jericho has a really good history of getting this kind of stuff over, and I have no doubt that this is going to work. I was a little apprehensive of Jericho going into another faction, but on a, in a business standpoint, that makes sense. Jericho is helping build stars. He, like I think you made the point last week. He helped build up um, Sammy and Santara and Ortiz to the point that they, they can go and do their own thing now, and people know who they are. I didn't know who any of them were, so Dina Circle helped me ingratiate myself to them. Exactly. Is that right? Or do they ingratiate us, themselves to us? I no, may have no. used that wrong. Too fancy of a word is, for me. We know who they are, and that's thanks largely to the work they've done with the. Uh, uh, you'll get some smarts who're like, well, yeah, you know, I, I followed the Indies. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, but we know who they are from watching AEW and from watching uh, the Inner Circle. Yeah. So if he can, you know, recreate that with the Jericho Appreciation Society then uh, it's just good business for them, isn't it? It helps build more stars. So yeah. I totally get why they're trying it, but I was a little apprehensive of, of another faction, if I'm honest. Our very first introduction to Sammy Guevara, he was wearing a fucking panda suit and was coming out to some weird song. More of a everyone song. was like, yeah, well, you know, panda thing. Um, <laughs> it came out and people were just like, who the fuck is this guy? Now he's a multi-time TNT champion under the tutelage of Jericho. You've got Daniel Garcia here who is, you know, fantastic. He's already been in matches with fucking the, the who's who of AEW in the short time he's been there. 2.0, if, they, if they're still going to go by that, I'm not too sure, but they've got something. They've got the charisma, definitely, you know, promo-wise and stuff, old school kind of... No, I don't want to say Nasty Boys type tag team because, I don't know, I, I don't want to shit on the Nasty Boys, but I think they could be better than the Nasty Boys, but similar vibe that I get from the pair of them, mm. so putting them That's with Jericho much. as well, I think could be huge for them, so... That's exactly yeah. what Jericho should be doing actually, now. One thing I think 2.0 actually really complement Jericho in terms of like heel work. I think they could work really, really well together. And that's no yeah. disrespect to Danny Garcia. I just see it a lot more with the with 2.0. Yeah, well, I think um, I think he needs to find his kind of his voice and you know his his character. Um, he's obviously got the in ring chops, but <laughs> sort of like sort of like um, feel good thing. Like, see, <laughs> you had your voice all along. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, so yeah, get the thumbs up from me. Um, but yeah, let us know. Are you a fan of the JAS? Let us know in the comments. Let us know on you know socials. Do you like because... jazz? Do you like jazz? Um, yeah, we will see. Indeed. Well, I'm glad I'm taking this next one, Carl. Because I've been talking about it for a while now. Oh yeah. Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker. And. Exactly as it should have happened, exactly as we wanted it to happen, exactly as we were predicted, but also fearful that they might just... I feel like I've been hurt by wrestling too many times to actually even be confident that this is how it's going to go, but this is how fucking went, Carl. Thunder Rosa is our new AEW Women's Champion, and rightly fucking so. Bang yes, match, the right results, and long may she reign. Oh, yeah. Um, how, how cool, you know, for, for Thunder, I think... Um, for someone who was, re you know, relatively unknown a year or two ago to have the the rise that she's had, I think um, it's just been phenomenal. And for her to now sit atop that AEW mountain as the the champ, um, it's just a huge accomplishment for her. And obviously, you can see how much it means to her. You know, she told us how much it means to her. Um, so, you know, we've been fans for for a long time now, and it's it's amazing. And I think Britt Baker, you know, she's been carrying that women's division for ages, like. Over, has she, has she had the belt for over a year, or, or, or nearly I would say a year. Over a year. I, I can't, you know, a long, no, a long I feel time. Feel like it might be over a year. Yeah, um, I, I feel like the time was right for her to lose it now as well. Like she's been phenomenal, but you've got to keep things fresh as well. So now, you know, under Thunder Rosa, what's gonna happen? The story what's the was right, wasn't it? Like we've been waiting for this culmination for a long time, or it feels like it anyway. Um, this started. I mean, you. Like she came into AEW a as a champ, and it's just inevitable she was going to become the AEW champ. The minute she signed with them, it was inevitable that was their destiny, originally, wasn't it? And uh, I think they they've had some epic matches between the two of them in the past. It just it worked perfectly. I honestly think the fact that it was Brit is the icing on the cake. 
Thunder mm. could have been a champion no matter who was the current title holder. She could have had a banger of a match with them. But the fact that it was Brit and the fact that they've almost got that that history, however short, they've got the history with each other. I, I think that was the icing on the cake for for this victory. Um, so yeah, fantastic. And you know what? Hats off to Thunder. She's uh, we have a special sort of uh, what's the word? Affinity for her being the first person we ever actually got to interview as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, naturally, we followed her career with quite with great interest. But I think anyone can agree, the right call. And uh, yeah, absolutely, I'm, be interesting think, to see who she, who she goes on to. Well, it's going to be exciting to be fair. Like you know, the the long term booking in me says, I can't wait for Serena Deeb because mm, we know yeah. over the NWA title that Deeb can obviously she's been killing everyone in these five minute challenges, but. Um, she has just come back, hasn't she? So that's that's got to play out. But yeah. um, we know that she has been built. Um, not she, that has been building herself up for a while now as like this unstoppable force, and she holds two victories over Thunder Rosa for the title. So that's going to play nicely into it. But in terms of her immediate opponent, I don't know. There's there's so many out there, which is a uh, you know an exciting time. I think uh, to see who who is Thunder, you know, going to go up against. It's it's going to make for interesting. Uh, an interesting watch, I would say. Yeah. Um, so the next highlight, I just want to give a little bit of a, a shout out to House of Black. Um, I've been a little bit on the fence with them. Uh, you know, I think it's safe to say we weren't the biggest fans of, in the world of um, Alistair Black when he was in WWE. We just felt like he was a little bit of a, a moody guy, but we knew that there was probably some potential in there that hadn't come out. Again, I maintain this with WWE constantly that they, I think they relied on Alistair's um, gimmick. Um, like, we've got nothing for you to do but go out and just talk shite. Uh, mm-hmm. They probably didn't say it exactly like that, but I, the issue I always had with Alistair in WWE was he never really had an opponent. He'd just come out and sit down the ring and go on about how things need to change and random other stuff, but it he, he, he never led anywhere. And no. it just felt directionless and senseless. Whereas, exactly. That's a little different here. It certainly is. Like, like ever, ever since he came in, you knew that something more was going to happen. And now, obviously, with Brody King coming in and then with Buddy Matthews, like it feels like a cohesive stable now. I think, mm. um, you know, Buddy's just kind of been a really solid addition. Because, um, you know, he's, he's not coming and like, oh, we have to put um, all the focus on him or anything like that. But he's come in, he's doing a good job, he's part of a, a, a faction and he's slotted in really nicely into that fold. And I think, you know, they, they did a fantastic trios finish to this match. Like, it yeah. was shit happening everywhere. There was like a dive out there, dive out there. Buddy Matthews does his thing and then gets the pin. And it was just like, okay, I can see these guys potentially winning the trios title whenever they, you know, come become a thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I just kind of, um, I think we've slept on them a little bit as kind of like, oh yeah, House of Black, that's kind of going on. And um, we've always thought it was kind of cool, but... This was the first match where I saw all three of them and was like, okay, this could be quite good. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to give them a bit of props, really, because I'm still excited to see, you know, what other additions we might potentially have. I'm still surprised Julia Hart hasn't gone in there yet. Um, oh, you seem, yeah, you seem awfully shocked with that. Yeah, because, um, like, she's still wearing the eye patch, so, like, is the story over? Is it not? What's going on? But, she just um, wants to be a pirate. <laughs> maybe. Uh, so, yeah, just wanted to give House of Black a little, uh, little bit of props there. Fair. Yeah. Uh, speaking of props, well, kind of works. <laughs> uh, my last one, uh, Keith Lee and Max Caster. Now, I'm curious how you feel about this because I know you love the acclaimed. But everybody loves, everybody the, loves the acclaimed. Yeah. But uh, what I like about this is... <laughs> <laughs> what I like about this is... Come um, on, Anthony. Come on. Well, how, how'd you do the thing? There you go. <laughs> so, um, what I like about this is that... Uh, the way they're building Keith Lee is not just like random squash, random squash, random squash, kind of is, but the fact that his opponents are getting tougher. Mm-hmm. And to the point that, like, Max is a fairly noticeable opponent. People know who he is. It's not just a random squash or a random match. Like, you don't, I don't, I didn't expect him to win, but he was a more realistic opponent, you know what I mean? So we're building up, so it's it adding more to Lee's credibility. Um, and we're obviously building up to him and Hobbs, which, again, I'm sure you're massively looking forward to, Carl. Um, oh, yeah. But I just, I think they're, they're executing this, but this is how you do um, monster 
no, he's not a heel, but like this is how you do the big guy squashing people. Like it's not just a random guy we no one's ever seen until tonight being squashed or two random guys being squashed. Like we've actually built to like okay, Max. And, uh, no disrespect to the other people Keith Lee's gone up against, by the way, but you, you get me points. It, it seems to be um, they're, they're actually building somewhere, which is nice rather than just being directionless squash matches. Yeah, definitely. I like that. I like um, that. It's interesting as well the fact that they kind of paired him up with um, with Swerve Strickland as well a little bit. So obviously, uh, Team Taz are going after Keith Lee, and then it's um, you know the acclaimed and Team Taz were kind of ganging up on him, and Swerve was the one who came out to kind of make the um, the save, if you will. And like the pair of them mm-hmm. obviously seemed to form a little bit of an alliance at the end, which was quite interesting. But I saw an interesting well, are you take on um, some sort of Swerve. Though that's the question. Ooh, well I saw. Um, Kind of a wholesome and quite nice take on Reddit, um, actually, about this, of someone just saying... Are you sure you were on Reddit? <laughs> it definitely wasn't Twitter. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, it was Reddit, and um, somebody just said that they that this match and the finish and everything like that meant so much to them because it was the first time they can recall uh, there were six black men in that ring all you know none none of them had a, a silly gimmick none of them was being made to look like a fool nothing like that they were just given the time to shine to um you know be part of a meaningful story and um it was just something which i i hadn't even really obviously thought about or considered and was like oh, okay that's quite an interesting take i know some people then also took a bit of a negative take to say well oh it's just just off the back of the big swell stuff and all that kind of thing so you can't please everybody but um mm. i actually thought um yeah, I had obviously never looked at it from that perspective, but... Um... I like that. I love how, like, apparently it's reactionary to the Big Swole stuff. It's like, well, yeah, it's not to do with like, Keith Lee being, like, a very marketable guy or the acclaim to um, build themselves up to be something really good. Or, you know, that, like, Hobbs and whole Taz connection and all that sort of stuff has been executed really well. Nothing to do with any of that. That was no. all just lucky. Like, that. luckily, that was all already there when they needed to just score points... Exactly. You know, what are the odds? Like that, what are the odds? What are the odds? There's definitely, you know, there's definitely no way any of this was sort of pre-planned or built up or anything like that. Exactly. Nah, no. Thank um, God, Tony just looked into that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, I didn't. I, I actually, I'm not going to harp on because I do. I really enjoy that that sort of wholesome sentiment. I was going to even try and take the piss out of Reddit a little bit. Not out of Reddit, but it can be a toxic place. Um, but honestly, yeah. I like that. I think that's a nice, uh, it's a nice way of looking at it, and it's not often you, get, and it should be often you get that, and you shouldn't have to think about it. But you do sadly, and it's a really nice point, and uh, yeah, I think that's it as well. Defo. Um, which leads us, Anthony, on to the only oh shite, and maybe this one's controversial as well. So, ah, Wardlow gets his opportunity at the TNT title against Scorpio Sky, and it was just such a shame to me. Um, not so much that Wardlow didn't win the belt. I wasn't really that fussed necessarily, but I just think, you know, the big turn that we've been expecting um, and anticipating for like the longest time of Wardlow and MJF and Wardlow finally kind of, um, or rather MJF finally getting his comeuppance and Wardlow basically, you know, beating the shit out of him. It ultimately just felt a bit flat, um, which is a shame. I think mm-hmm. a lot of it came to just purely the execution, like obviously having the American top team so involved and, you know, Paige Van Zandt's fucking husband, whose name no one can ever remember, getting involved and beating him up and stuff like that. And it was just... It's it Mr. Van Zandt to you. <laughs> Love that. Um, but effectively, it should just be, you know, okay. Wardlow against Spears and MJF. Like, it... Can I just say? I fucking called this. You did? Um I said, this was never going to land well. There's no way you can finish this between the two of them. Fucking said it. Yeah, and to be fair, I like I I did say that, you know, I can see this being the start because you quite rightly said, oh well, it, you know, if you're going to put the title on Scorpio Sky, you can't, surely you can't take him up, take it off him that quick. Cause that means Wardlow's going to like lose. And I thought, well, okay, even if they do that, this is going to be the moment we get of MJF and Wardlow, and it just wasn't. Um, yeah, and I, I'm not saying that Wardlow should have decimated MJF in this. I've like, got to build anticipation. That's where we're going, and that's still the right place to head, but. I just felt like the way it happened, it just didn't need American Top Team involved and you know muddying the waters and stuff. It should have just been, you know, either Wardlow gets screwed out of it, and then there's like a big thing, you know, 
uh, between MJF and Wardlow in the middle and then Sean Spears takes him out. That would have been better, but it's just the fact the American top team and everything would have oh, just watered it down. exact same thing, but no Sean Spears. <laughs> well, that yeah. Also work. Well, yeah. But, um, like, the problem you've got is, like, Wardlow would beat the living shit out of MJF, so you need, for heel tactics for it to work, you need MJF to, you know, have some backup or whatever still, don't you? So, um, yeah, it's just... Just yeah, a shame. Okay. I'm still confident that we're going to get to the good place, and I think everybody can't wait to see Wardlow. <laughs> wait a minute. This is the bad place. <laughs> this is the bad place. But yeah, we're going to get to a good place with it, and I think um, you know Wardlow is going to decimate MJF, and we're all here for it. So yeah, I just um, a shame. So not not shitting on the storyline as a whole, not shitting on it because it is heading there, but it's just yeah, wasn't the the best first step. Bit of a stumble, I would say. Yeah. Um. So that leads us to the ratings, Anthony. For me, not an amazing week of AEW. Um, obviously, huge props to Brit and Thunder on that cage match. Obviously, new women's world champ, which I'm sure you're fucking over the moon about. Um, oh. But other than that, it just kind of felt like a bit of a run-of-the-mill show. Um, obviously, it was St. Patrick's Day Slam or whatever the fuck it was called. Um, just kind of felt a bit meh, like expected a bit more. And Rampage, other than that main event again, wasn't fantastic, so... Run of the mill. I'm going to give it two and a half this week. I'm going to slightly disagree on a three. I think I might have enjoyed this a little more than you. Okay, okay. But I was going to. I went into this like super excited over one match anyway. So <laughs> the things Thunder Rosa does to you. That's what I'm saying. Um, so that's a very, very bold statement. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, for for uh. legal reasons, <laughs> nothing. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> just to wrap up then with some of the other promotions. So obviously, we had the Crockett Cup this week um, for the NWA, and Harry Smith rocked up. Um, Yay, so it's good to see him back. Indeed, really partnered got done up with WWE there. Exactly. Um, so obviously, partnered up with Doug Williams, another UK uh, great, um, and the pair of them made it all the way to the finals of the tag tournaments, missing out narrowly to the Briscoes, um, who ended up winning the whole thing. So yeah, big. You know, you know, big news. Harry's back, which is great. So look forward to seeing what he does in NWA. Um, yeah. And lastly, we had uh, Matt Cardona. Uh, um, I think we need to mention one other thing after this one. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. We had Matt Cardona um, retaining his title against Nick Aldis uh, via DQ. Uh, Jeff Jarrett was involved as well, special guest referee. Um, but Matt Cardona still the champion. And then, nice. what else? What else we got to say? Just, I think it's worth a mention because we reported on this last week, right? That the social media, all these um, accused, you know, wrestling uh, dare cheats and reporters and all this, people like us, Carl Vultures, right? All got hoodwinked by Chelsea Green. <laughs> yeah. I think that's worth mentioning because she didn't break a fucking wrist, did she? Which that, is great news. That is but quality, to be fair. I, hats off to her because that was executed fucking brilliantly. Yeah, and like, do you know what? Because she's because she's broken her wrist so many times, it was just the perfect like fucking ploy, wasn't it? Like fair play to her. She um, yeah. she's got some skills, man. Yeah, I, we all believed it. And the funny thing is, because she was basically playing social media. <laughs> yeah. And what do we do? We go and fucking talk about it. <laughs> exactly. She yeah she she pulled the wall over all of our eyes. But the main thing is she's fine, which is obviously is great news. But yeah, what a bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, why yeah, yada. Um, so yeah, another fun filled week of this week in wrestling. Um, unfortunately, not the greatest of shows um, across WWE and a little bit below par for Dynamite, in my opinion, as well, and uh, to what we've been used to. But all in all, um, yeah, it was another week. Let's say that it was a week. Um, so we are going to talk to you um, about all the latest news and rumors in the Ringside Report. Make sure you check that out. Um, and we're also going to be doing What If this week, and we're going to be talking What If the NWO never existed. What would have happened? Um, so, yeah. Um, but before we go, if you like wrestling, if you live in the UK, or... Like pina coladas. <laughs> if you like pina coladas, I'm meeting wrestlers too. Then get down to Liverpool for the full of a wrestling... Woo. Um... Oh, yeah, that was so much better. Sort of wrestling it is. <laughs> God. I thought you were doing. No, I just went woo. Didn't even think of it the second one. So, yeah. 
That was genius. For the love of wrestling two, here is some more details about that, and we'll see you next time. For Love of Wrestling, Europe's largest wrestling convention, returns to the Exhibition Centre in Liverpool on the 23rd and 24th of April. Guests this year include Diva of the Decade, Trish Stratus, The Wrestling God, JBL, The Dudley Boys, Tori Wilson, and just announced MJF from AEW. We will also be doing a Wyatt family reunion as we welcome Eric Rowan, the man formerly known as Braun Strowman and indeed the fiend Bray Wyatt also just announced is the man the legend, the icon Sting and of course your Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle, this and many 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 more guests as well as prop builds, Q&As with all of the wrestlers and some of the biggest wrestling collections in the world on display from our exhibitors, get your tickets at forloverwrestling.com .co.uk or search Facebook or Twitter for For the Love of Wrestling. For the Your Love of Wrestling, Europe's biggest wrestling convention returns to Liverpool the 23rd and the 24th of April. Hey everybody, this is Thunder Rosa and you're watching or listening A to the K. 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 A to the K.